nobody is starting a company in manufacturing. You know, manufacturing in that time was totally unsexy. And so when I declared I was going to start a business that writing software for manufacturing, and everybody go like, why? <laughs> you're, in the, you know, you're in the center of internet technology. Why would you start in a business in manufacturing? It was just totally not something that venture capital would be interested in investing in or anything. So I, I thought about why. And, and I thought about that I wanted to bring something of value. And what if we can combine the hand craftsmanship that we human has been able to do for thousands of years with the internet technology? If we could combine those, what happens? And at that time, I called it personal factory. And I was thinking about how if we can make manufacturing as customizable and as, as easy as desktop publishing. And so I, I got some PhD student together. I said, I'm going to start this company, and I'm going to do software for personal factory. And they go like, why? I said, well, it's more intuitive for people to want a personal factory at home than p personal computer, right? You know, when PC came out, everybody thought nobody would want that. Uh, and they and one of the PhD students said, yeah, cute. You just made it after your own name. So my name is Ping Fu, it's PF, right? Personal factory versus PC and PF. Um, but that was a coincidence. Um, so I, um, I had many people told me that was a bad idea. But every entrepreneur knows when you start a business, when you're very passionate about something, that no one can tell you no, because my, my, my mind worked like Thousand Crane. Um, Thousand Crane is a symbolic um, good fortune in China. You can, people talk about longevity, good, good fortune, prosperity, whatever, but there is not a bad news in that Thousand Crane. And that's how my <laughs> mind was working. Like everything I was thinking about, um, personal factory or customization or customized manufacturing, I could only think about good news. So I went to raise money. I said, imagine walking into orthodontics office, watching the animation of your daughter's teeth for next two years and watching the beautiful smile. Imagine walking into Nike town, get your, sh get your foot measured, and next day come back to pick up a cust customized hiking booth. And I said, imagine, 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 then I said, those are ideas, and Geomagic, which is the company that I give the name to, will turn those dreams into reality. And that was 1997. I give a presentation, and I immediately raised, got money. And I, it's almost like I hit a nerve. I got so many people coming to tell me how they hated to go to dentist, and how, how, how their shoes never fit their foot, or their left and right are not the same, I saw the great. If you have a technology that could really solve people's problem, that's got to be a good business. And so that's how I started Geomagic. And this is one of the applications really touched me. In the early day of Geomagic, I got a call from NASA and said, could you help us to detect and repair the damaged tile for the space shuttle? because we, we create the software which can image the work and then we create a digital model and that gets sent to the manufacturing machines. So in this case, because Columbia crashed when we entered the Earth and they didn't detect the underwing tile damage and there was a hole on it and then the heat went in and space shuttle blew up. So when Arlene Collins, the first female commander was commanding Discovery, he put one of the payload on the NASA space shuttle for safety, for the guarantee of safety return of astronaut. So the company that I started participated in that payload. We would put 3D scanner on the space shuttle. It will scan the entire surface of the shuttle and detect the damage. And when the damage was captured, the data gets sent down from the satellite into the ground station. We, we will compute the repair of that damage. 
and that data gets sent up to the space shuttle uh, or space station, and then they would cut out the insulation tile exactly in the shape of the damage, and the space worker can go out there, put it in, seal it, and down, right? You all do dental care. It's kind of like a dental cavity and dental filling, just bigger. And so we did that, and when this, when this payload was was in the space when this technology was demonstrated, the CNN, CNBC, many of the big news media came to interview us. This was a big deal. Right around that time, my father was dying, and he was in China, he was watching CNN, and he was watching it when I was watching it in the United States. And he called me and said, Ping, I am so proud of you. And that was the last word I heard from my father. That little girl who was told she was nobody, and that little girl who wanted to be astronaut could never be, never saw that she could actually start a business and contribute the technology to guarantee the safety return of astronaut. The life do come back in full circle.